when we talk about FAST-scan DSC, we're going to talk about scanning rates of 300 degrees a minute or higher. Now, obviously, there's an area in between 50 and 300 that kind of depends who you talk to, whether they're considered to be fast scanning techniques. This is not a, a new technique totally, because it was used for survey techniques for years. Um, back when I first learned DSC in graduate school, one of the tricks that you would use if you couldn't find a transition is to scan at 200 degrees a minute. And I think I was using a DSC-2 then um, from the Perkinoma Corporation. And you would then exaggerate the peak you wanted to do. You'd know about the temperature range that the peak was in. And you'd go back and you'd look at it more precisely. Modern developments in instrumentation allowed us to do quantitative work um, with the instrument at these high rates. And this work was first developed by Vincent Bateau and Thiers Piper at DSM. Here's one of their um, slides showing the difference between 10 degrees a minute and 150 degrees a minute. And we get different looking melt peaks. How does it work? Well, in a DSC, your heat flow is really only affected by two things, the scanning rate and the heat capacity of the sample. Now, you can change the apparent heat capacity of the sample by increasing the amount of sample you have in there so that you have more of it to give you an effect. Um, or you can change the scanning rate. But really, nothing else makes a difference. So since the heat capacity is really a fixed property of the material, we can increase the mass, which increases the size of the heat capacity term. We can flatten and alter the baseline to make 